Hello and welcome back. Despite our disappointment in the last episode at losing on penalties in the FA Trophy final against Notts County, we had a reasonably good season. And today we're going to have a review of that said season. Welcome to Be a Legend. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 38 of To Be A Legend. My name's Mark and on today's episode, the review of the season 2023-24. Uh, a bit of transfer news and a preview of the new up and coming season where we will be in League 2, Sky Bet League 2 for this coming season. So what could be better than that? Uh, first things up, uh, as we always do at this stage of uh, the uh, review process, we'll go through the season review in just a moment, but let's have a look uh, in a depth, a deep dive into the uh, league table. And uh, here we go. Uh, we were champions, um, got there with a, a game to spare, or a couple of games to spare, um, played 46 games, won 35, drew eight, lost three, 103 goals for, 34 goals against, uh, 69 goal difference, uh, 113 points. In fact, three of the teams, uh, Notts County and Newport, all getting over 100 points in the league. I wonder how many times that has actually happened. Uh, Notts County second, um, 46 uh, points, uh, 133, drew nine, lost four, um, 91 four. 39 against, uh, 52 goal difference, 108 uh, points. And Newport, who got promoted via the playoffs against Notts County, beating them, um, they had 103 points, 5 points behind them, 10 points behind us. All seems a bit Mickey Mouse in this uh, particular division because uh, you're finishing those top bits. It really is quite ghouling. You've, you've missed out by 5 points, yet you've got promoted over and above the team that was there before you just does, doesn't feel right at all but there you go um sometime or other they may put it right i guess um so hey right um so they are the teams at the top of the table uh then came chesterfield on 92 south end on 89 and then 10 points down to Aldershot in sixth place relegated um torquay on 42 points gateshead on 35 Dagon and Redbridge on 32. Kingstonian been relegated for a long, long time. Only won three games all season. Uh, 13 points. Um, they won against Boreham Wood, Altrincham and Woking in a long and hard season. That lost 39 of their 46 games. So uh, not particularly good. Halifax Town surviving, I think, on the last day of the season. Uh, uh, as Torquay United drop down into the uh, Panorama National League uh, North. Well, in fact, they'll be in the South uh, quite clearly. Uh, right, uh, most goals scored. We had the most scored. The uh, best defence was Newport County. Only 31 goals they conceded all season. Three better than us. Um, I think there's a lot more to tell about that. Right, let's have a quick uh, look. Um, as we do um where was it won and lost uh home uh we lost one game at home uh that uh, game against uh carlisle it was a 2-1 loss the only one that we lost all season 60 points picked up at home from a um 69 points available uh we drew three halifax town stockport county and newport county at home uh, winning 19. Uh, Notts County had two losses. Uh, Newport County had three losses. And uh, that was the story of the season at home. Away from home, uh, we were the best team. Only lost two away from home. Pretty much the same. 53 points away from home. Um, Notts County 51. Newport County on 47. Um, those two games that we lost away from home were Halifax Town, a 1-0 win, and Bromley, sorry, a 1-0 loss 
and Bromley, a 2-0 loss. Um, that's how the away stacked up. First half for the season, Notts County, halfway stage, were a point in front of us. Uh, we were tucked in in second place. Uh, Newport County were third, a point behind us. And then came our older shot, Chesterfield, South End, and Stockport County. Um, second half, I think that's where we really, really did go. Open the doors. Uh, six points clear of Notts County in second place in the second half of the season, as you see. Lost three games. Oh, do you want to do that? Yeah, we lost one, whereas, uh, sorry, we hadn't lost any games in that first half of the season. Uh, we'd won or drawn our games. Uh, Notts County had lost one, and Newport County had also lost one. Um, second half of the season, as we've just uh, looked at, uh, 58 points, Notts County 52, Newport County 49, 47, 45, and Bromley on 40 points. Uh, Last five games, 12 points, same as Newport County. The running was good and uh, Stockport County. As you'll see, Notts County dropped away a little bit. They dropped a couple of points in that run-in, um, which uh, did for them in the end, gave us the chance to win it outright. Media prediction-wise, uh, media prediction um, was to finish 13th. Uh, we actually finished top. Near Notts County expect to finish as champions, finished in second place, uh, Newport third, fifth. So they were all out of sync a little bit. Carlisle were expected to finish third, finished in seventh. Uh, Kingstonian down the bottom were expected to be relegated along with um, Weymouth and Dulwich Hamlet, both who managed to survive. Uh, Torquay United expected to go down and they did. Uh, but Gateshead and Dagenham Redbridge weren't and did. So that's how we did 16 to 1. If you'd put odds on us, A, getting promoted, and B, going up as champions. So if we go back, uh, we can have a look, I think. Uh, past positions that we probably want to look at. And you'll see how our season progressed. As you will see, we were top after six games. Had a little bit of wobbly time, dropped off after 14 games. Um, touched the top a couple of times uh, between game 14 or game 13 and game 32, um, but not for long. But then when we touched the summit after game 32, we stayed there until the end of the season. Notts County had a bit of time at the top, but once they dropped off game 33 um yeah then they followed us in second place and interestingly newport county had a wonderful season because they weren't any lower than third all season kingstonian as you'll see once they hit bottom after eight games stayed there talkie united managed to pull them ourselves up a little bit but really the writing was on the wall from around about here somewhere. So all in all, bit of a dark one. Right, with that all said and done, let's have the season review. Well, that took a bit of finding. I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Um, we'd lost it. We had to restore a backup of the uh, of the um, save. Uh, in order to find it, because uh, where it was in the uh, in the news items, it had actually dropped off. So I need to uh, be careful of that in future. Right. So this is the review then, and um, let's have a look at who's been coming in and who's uh, not coming in. Uh, top uh, person coming in uh, for average ratings. Uh, Manuel Fernandez coming from Peterborough. Uh, 36 appearances, five from the bench, uh, five goals and three assists, a 7.66. Luke Robinson in from Wigan, 48 appearances, four from the bench, one goal, 
19 assists so that is massive amount of assists a 7.44 uh ronnie nelson came in from leicester 47 appearances uh three from the bench five goals uh pretty much all from corners and uh, no assists 7.43 uh jacob adams he was a goalkeeper played three games 7.33 uh josh barrett came in from kingsland town uh, 19 appearances five from the bench eight goals seven assists uh very good 7.3 Three zero, uh, Jack Nolan, our star uh, player coming in. Um, he come from Accrington Stanley. Thirty uh, appearances, five from the bench, uh, ten goals, ten assists, a seven point one eight. Uh, Gerard Harlock from Blackburn, forty seven uh, appearances, one um, subs appearance, eight goals, nine assists. 7.09 uh dexter lembitska uh from wolves 46 appearances three from the bench three goals sorry two goals uh 10 assists and 7.08 and the last one getting over a seven rating was conor mcbride also from blackburn uh 24 appearances two from the bench 11 goals five assists 7.01 uh amongst the others zach brunt uh, Jacob Shepard, um, Sam Osborne, and Brad Holmes. Lewis Doherty didn't get any appearances. Neither did Tom Cannon, who came in from Everton. Maybe he got a chance next season. Who knows? He's uh, still improving, so uh, there is room for him to do. Uh, J Jacob Shepard, of course, on loan from West Brom. I presume that's where he's from. Yeah, on loan from. Yeah, on loan from West Brom. So uh, 28 appearances, 10 from the bench, 8 goals and 7 assists. So he had a quite a good season as well. Um, a plus for the board for the Van Rama National League. Uh, happy with the team as they won it. Average home gate, 1,656. Will Russ, top scorer on 26 goals. We've looked at the table. We won't look at that again. Emirates FA Cup, um, first round minimum. Uh, they were delighted we got to the second round, knocked out in the second round by Ipswich. And that was uh, how we got through Hendersford Town uh, 4-0, Chippenham Town 3-0, and then 2-1 loss to Ipswich. Not too uh, too shabby by all accounts. And the board delighted that we reached the FA Trophy final. Um, expectation was to get to the fourth round. We actually got all the way. Um, top scorers are Will Russ on four and Connor McBride also on four. And that's how we did it. Oxford City, Fylde, Barrow, Karsh uh two-legged win against Dagenham Redbridge and then losing to Notts County in the final. Moments to remember, 6-1 win against Boreham Wood um, back in August was a good win. Parkin, Harlock, Brunt, uh, Russ uh, getting a hat-trick in that one. A 10 minute hat trick 80 85 and 93 minutes um match to remember was the 2-0 win against older shot back in uh november october back in october and the goal of the season which we will find in it zach brunt uh, a late late winner against Woking in april which uh, i think pretty much sealed our promotion um as it was we're going to have a look at that uh, goal right now. Here we go. Let's have a look at it. Williams, Robinson, Brunt. Uh, Williams, Brunt, Hughes, back to Brunt, who whacks it from about 30 yards out. And uh, that was goal of the season and uh, worthy of it too, I would suggest. Um, our reputation has gone up. Uh, previously um one star we are now one and a half star um no new sponsorship deals our sponsorship was down very slightly or about the same um as last season up a little bit for broadcast revenue uh, corporate hospitality was up uh prize money down um that's because we didn't perhaps didn't do well in the fa cup maybe um and match day commercial was up um Shirt sold, McBride, Russ, Brunt, Harlock and Nolan were the top sellers. No real surprises there then. 
our best 11, Smith in goal, Robinson, Nelson, Fernandez, and Godsmart Ford. Hughes and Harlock in midfield. Shepard, Williams and Nolan are attacking midfield. Will Russ up front. It could be good to see him back in the new season. And that is the team that we put out for the best part of the season, really. Awards-wise, um, well, I won uh, Manager of the Month in December, February and March. And the League, National League Manager of the Year uh, got that at the end of the season, of course. Uh, clubs awards a fans player of the season uh fernandez a young player of the season fernandez signing of the season nolan goal of the season we've seen it zach brunt uh top goal scorer uh will russ with 30 goals uh luke robinson 19 assists top assist man uh most player of the match awards was fernandez with 10 uh best average was fernandez at 7.7 .7, and most passes completed in 90 minutes was Jim Kellerman, who completed 67 uh, passes in a game. No competition awards, which I'm most surprised about, considering we won the league uh, record breakers. Um, 30 goals has broken the record there. Most league goals by a player, 26 in a season. Most goals by a player in a match, four will Russ. Uh, most goals by a player in a league match was four also. Um, assists, 19. Fernandez uh, for the match uh, awards of the season. Uh, worst discipline, Ronnie Nelson, 14 yellow cards, one red card. Naughty boy. And Zach Brown had the fastest goal after 21 seconds. I'm not quite sure which game that came in, but he did get it. So, really, that's how it all ended up. Champions of the Van Arama National League uh, and the uh, soundbite from Craig. Craig Brown of 442 is a remarkable season for Farsley. Started superbly, never let up, and they deservedly are going up. So it's, it's uh, League Two is where we are going. We're not going to mess around with uh, bits and pieces of a uh, transfer news because uh, we'll find that it gets very, very sluggish. What we're going to do is we're going to do it slightly different. We're going to have a look at the transfer um, data. And then we'll have a review of the new, uh, sorry, a preview, should I say, not a review, but a preview of the new season. So we're going to hop now and have a look at the transfers. If I get the right screen up here, you can't see what I'm doing. I sort of know what I'm doing. We're going to hop to the 1st of August and see how we're doing transfer wise. Knew we couldn't jump straight to the 1st of August. Uh, what well, I do come back and just show you this uh, because uh, the board has announced plans to enlarge our stadium by 1,750 seats. The planning work costing £2 million uh, will be carried out in order to comply with the league requirements. Additional funding for the project has been secured with a £1 million grant from the authorities. It's expected that these works will take around nine months to complete and while the development work is undertaken. Uh, we will ground share with Harrogate Town at the Enviro Vent Stadium. So uh, there we go. Um, start date is 27th of May, which is already underway, and a complete date of March 2025, which means that we should be back in before the end of the season. Uh, we will have a capacity then of 5,550, which will be very, very nice. Right, still waiting on the uh, finances, which I was hoping to come back for as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to wait until we've got that and I will come back. So in the matter of a couple of GIFs. Well, you come back on the 31st of July, not quite the 1st of August, but it's as near as damn it. And uh, as you see, we haven't been doing a lot of activity in the transfer market. It's been one of those, and I've noticed a couple of the other contact creators saying similar things, that uh, FM23 has been a lot more difficult to pull out the uh, the players. And um, we normally bring quite a few players in. Um, this time, they are being very selective of who they choose to. They don't just come to you because they've been let go by a Premier League side. They don't just come to you. 
and it's really, really annoying because you identify early doors, the players that you want to uh, bring in. Um, goalkeeper, for instance, I think uh, some of you have been watching uh, my series from the start. Um, we'll remember Kieran Slicker, um, who we had in, uh, I can't remember which series it was now. Uh, leave a comment down below, remind me of where he was. Uh, but we had him in before. He was absolutely fantastic. Did two or three seasons for us, I think. Um, come from Manchester City. He was available to, the, again, let let go by Manchester City in-game. And um, we brought him in on trial. He was playing fantastic. It looked like we tried to sign him, did a deal with him. I didn't mess about with it too much on the basis that I knew if I cut him down too much, somebody else would take him away. And I have a feeling he's got somewhere like Notts County, who are in the division below us. I just don't understand why. Uh, but there you go, his loss. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, it's been extremely difficult. So who have we brought in? We've brought in three players. We've let Jake Rooney go out on loan to Kidderminster Harriers. Uh, Joe Fryer. Um, I was actually going to come back for the finances, but I should have said... Couldn't find them there. The uh, the um, inbox message uh, seems to have gone missing somewhere. Um, so uh, Joe Fryer, he's a goalkeeper. He is the replacement for Kieran Slicker. Probably not on the same par as Kieran Slicker, but uh, do we actually have him to compare up here? No, I don't think so. Uh, but uh, he is a goalkeeper. He's 28 years old, a bit older than what we would have uh, probably liked to have brought in. He was previously at Nottingham Forest. Uh, although he didn't play there. Um, he has played championship football uh, before and League Two football before um, with Stevenage out on loan, Hartlepool on loan. Um, but uh, come from Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough sold him on to Swindon Town, Swindon Town to St. Johnson, St. Johnson to Nottingham Forest. And he's now with us down in League Two. So Joe Fryer is the new goalkeeper. He's a three-star current ability, potential three-star. So we we'll probably look to replace him in a season or so. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he's reasonably okay as a um, as a goalkeeper. Um, probably not best suited for the sweeper keeper role, but he's uh, he's he's okay. He will do a job, and as you'll see, um, he's done quite well in the non-competitive matches. We'll have a look at those. Uh, very very shortly so that's joe fryer our new goalkeeper matty willock he is a 27 year old montserratian montserratian um i presume that's from montserrat or there or thereabouts montserratian um he's come in um from morecambe uh was at manchester united released from manchester united and has been around the houses a little bit uh went to gillingham uh then salford um, Burton Albion paid some money for him, went out on loan to Morecambe, and he's ended up on a freebie with us here. So that's Matt, Matty Willock. Um, he is 27 years, years old, three and a half star current ability, has the potential to be four stars. He's a ball winning midfielder. He's his best role, uh, or box to box midfielder, one of those two, which suits our 4 3 4 2 3 1. Um, because uh, we switch between those two options. So he'll be fine as we do the switching around, as you'll see. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine, whichever we sw switch around um, for those. Um, he is our midfielder that we've got in, and then we brought in Nico Jones. Uh, another player, we had another defender lined up uh, who we were unsuccessful in getting. Uh, but Nico has come to us. He's 22 years old. He's Irish. Um, he is from Brentford, um, previously of Oxford United, um, on loan to Oxford City, Haven uh, and Waterlooville. Uh, Brentford snapped him up uh, on a freebie as a lot of these premier league sides do of course and then never play the players um and they just sit on the bench warming the bench why these players don't just stick with the teams that they're at um i know it's all money um but uh to be frank it's, it's a bit madness isn't it but nico jones he's uh he's been off to a good start 
he is a no-nonsense centre-back, which uh, fits with us. He can play as a ball-playing defender or as a central defender, all rounder really. Three-star current ability, four and a half-star potential ability. He is looking pretty good. We've got him in until 2027, so we've got him in for uh, three seasons. Um, hopefully, he will do us uh, some good in that time. Um, right, that's where we're at at the moment. Whether we'll progress any more uh, before uh, the start of the season, I don't really know. Let's have a look a quick look at the schedule. You'll see that we've been playing some preseason friendlies. You will see some names in here that you won't have been. We won't have mentioned. They've come and gone. Uh, Taylor Hart, kiddo Taylor Hart. He's gone to Accrington Stanley. Chose Accrington Stanley over us. Accrington Stanley, who currently are in League Two, the same as us. So we will be seeing him later on in the season. I'm sure of that. Um, but uh, he is uh, from Arsenal. Gone to to them. Um, very disappointing. Uh, Al Aramandi is currently um, Wickham, I think it is. Uh, he's still on trial with us, actually, uh, but we can't sign him because he's uh, he needs seventy percent of his international duties. Hasn't got enough um, to come in. Um, sure, that's what it says somewhere. Hmm, I'm not sure. Um, as I say, there's a couple more there. And this guy, Chris Freno Joseph, he was the defender that we were really after, um, but brought Nico Jones in instead. Um, Nico Jones will do a job, 24 year old. Uh, he's gone to Notts County, basically, um, on the basis that. Uh, I don't know why Notts County. I mean, Notts County are in the National League. We're in League Two. Wouldn't you have rather played in League Two? I would have done, um, but obviously he doesn't. So uh, as I say, he's uh, he's lost, not ours. Chris Farino, Joseph, remember that name. It may come up again at some point or other. Let's see if we can find uh, Slicker. There we go, Kieran Slicker. He went to Brentford, actually. I tell a lie. He went to Brentford. So who can blame him? He's gone for Premier League football. he would probably sit on the bench because actually... The goalkeeper that we brought in, he's re he's replaced. So um, I should say no more. Um, we will scout him. And we have got him on the, the uh, watch list. So at some point or other, if he comes up on loan or or whatever, can we compare him with now with Joe Fryer? We can. Um, a bit. He's not been scouted, albeit he's been with us and we, we've not scouted him. So who knows? Who knows? Um, I don't think there's any more in the pot at the moment. Um, nothing active, nothing in, nothing out. Only Chris Atkinson looks like he could be going out on loan for, for the season. His uh, contract runs out at the end of this coming season. Uh, we will say goodbye to him because he's not going to feature. Didn't feature all last season. Hasn't featured this season. Um, so he has missed out. Finances-wise, uh, we've used all the transfer budget up because we've moved it down into the wage budget um, in order and we're still... 20 quid short i think it is so um if chris atkinson goes out we've balanced the books as far as wage is concerned so that's uh that's good news um one thing we haven't looked at we were in this uh we know here we have one more friendly against boston uh before the season starts and we open up the season against leighton orient in the league two um past meetings there we go um I don't think we've only had any past meetings against Leighton Orient. No, we haven't. Uh, and then we will play Rotherham in the uh, Caribou Cup first round. Rotherham, who are currently uh, in League One. Yeah, they're in League One in the uh, division above us. Um, so our first episode, Leighton Orient versus Rotherham. And then we'll be playing a few games and coming back a little bit down here, depending on uh, what happens. Uh, there's also a draw coming up for the... Uh, the Papa John's uh, trophy, whatever you call it. Uh, right, we'll uh, look at this a little bit more um, and also the uh, pre-season expectations and what have you uh, in our final roundup uh, on the uh, eve of the new season and the, the new season preview.
Well, we won that uh, final pre-season friendly by three goals to nil. Saturday the 10th of August is the first game of the season. We are on the 9th of August, as you'll say, see 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, let's have a quick look at transfers. Um, we have made a loan offer to Bristol City for Josh Bowler. Um, will that one come off or not? We are waiting to find out. Um, we have brought one other player in. He's been on trial with us for a long, long time, and we've uh, he's been injured. He had a cruciate uh, ligament uh, damage, um, and uh, we have brought him in now. Um, decided to bite the bullet, basically. Chris Atkinson has gone out, um, and as soon as he went out on the second, we brought this uh, Josh Dixon in uh, and blown the budget again for the wages. Could do with another player going out, really, is uh, is the answer to that trick. Uh, but uh, Josh Barrett could be the player that's going out. Um, I'm trying to see if he's he wants off. He's basically got fed up. Uh, doesn't look as if he get any game time. Complained about it bitterly. Um, we'll save 250 quid. It won't be all of it, but uh, we will save 250 quid if he goes out. Um, Josh Dixon was where we were going. Josh Dixon, currently a three and a half star uh, current ability, four and a half star potential ability. He's 23 years old. Um, he is a an advanced playmaker, likes playing in that slot there, but he's also pretty capable at playing uh, in midfield if we need him to drop back and can also play out on the right-hand side, um, not uh, probably as spectacularly as he can elsewhere, but he can play out there. He's, uh, he's He can get around a little bit. Um, stats wise I think he's quite reasonable teamwork, vision, um, natural fitness, agility, acceleration pace, not fantastic but he's uh, pretty good um, so and his uh, past history, he has been at Carlisle was uh, pretty much where he's come from, played in League 2 for a lot of his well not played, but um, in National League when uh, South End and then played some games uh, with Carlisle for the last couple of seasons, uh, but he was available on a freebie. So we've got him in and he's looking good. If we have a look at the squad depth, um, you will see Dixon on that side. Dixon is top dog there and he's okay out on this right hand side. Um, could do with a, a four star over on this right. So we're still looking for a right sided defender and we've also got another goalkeeper on uh, in on loan. Boney, who is um, is as good as Fryer, um, but uh, Smith will uh, probably spend uh, the season as the backup goalie. Luke Robinson still okay on that side, um, and Nico Jones as the other centre back um, with a couple of options. God Smith, uh, God Smart Ford, and uh, Fernandez, of course, who can play in that middle. Still not found a striker as good as or better than Will Russ or uh, Conor McBride. So they're going to be our two attacking forces for this coming season because we simply cannot afford to bring anybody else in because we can't afford to pay their wages. People have got to go out before they can come in. We've got no transfer budget that we can move over into there. Um, so that's where we are at. Nicky Hogarth was a player that we had in on trial as well. And... Uh, He's gone out. Um, right. Let's have a look at the League 2 table. Um, because at this thing, let's have a look at the season preview. We are expected to finish 23rd. We were expected to finish 24th. So uh, bringing Josh Dixon in has pushed us up one place. Um, Newport County expected to go down with us. 200 to 1 uh, if you want to put some money on um, in order to get promoted to League 1. Um, the teams coming down, Milton Keynes, Dons, Leighton Orient, Sutton United and Hartlepool are all in the mix there. None of them really expected to go back up apart from possibly MK um, Dons. Uh, nobody featuring in the dream, Media Dream 11. Excuse me. Uh, the Media Dream 11. Um, we do have a couple of players in the key players. Josh Dixon and Ronnie Nelson are the two. Um, 
that will uh, be with us. Just one other thing to be said is I think we've renewed a lot of contracts as well over that uh, summer period. Um, with a lot of the mainstay of players. Let's have a look at rank this on ability. And uh, as you'll see, likes of Ronnie Nelson, we've secured again for another year. Um, Jacob Shepard, interestingly, he's back in on loan for a further year, which is uh, reasonable news. While uh, we haven't really got anybody to uh, fit in those and we haven't got uh, any finances. Um, having said all of that, um, we could do with somebody of quite a good pay packet going out. Brad Holmes, possibly. Um, will he feature? I don't really know. He didn't feature that much last season. And uh, I think it's possibly unlikely. And he is holding a big wage bracket. When you look at the uh, star ratings down here in amongst this little bob here, um, Brad Holmes and even God Smart Ford to some extent on 575 are punching a big hole in our wage budget uh, that could be given to somebody. Jim Kellerman's on 500 a week. Um, if somebody wants to come in and buy him, I will sell him. Luke Williams, 450 a week. I mean, he's way down there. He's only a one star. Uh, maybe it's time for him to move on as well especially if we've got Josh Dixon there. He's not going to get a lot of game time. We'll see. Uh, we might need to look. And obviously, we now have a transfer window that is going to stop us from doing it um, at uh, willy-nilly time. So uh, we need to sort of be watching as that uh, comes down to the end of September. Hopefully, we'll have a bit of bigger, better picture as to what that looks like and uh, potentially how we can offload some players to uh, get some more money back into that wage budget. Right, well, I think that's pretty much it. A roundup of the uh, pre-season, where what we're expecting, and um, where we're going to go. So, uh, uh, Leighton Orient and Rotherham are first two games of the season. You'll see them on the next episode when we come back. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, don't forget to leave me that big thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification button to uh, keep you up to date with all future episodes of this and our other series uh, to be a legend and um, making Tottenham Hotspurs again. And then, of course, any new series that uh, come out and are released. Uh, new episodes are from the bottom to the top, currently released every Monday and Thursday at 4.15pm. And if you want to keep up to date what's happening on this channel and more, uh, what's going to happen when FM23 uh, kicks off, uh, then you need to follow me on Twitter at Just Offside 2. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you for the next episode. It will be episode number 39 and it's out on monday until then it's a very good bye to